Welcome and thank you for joining us for this episode in the Fearless Minds research series, Deep Dive, The Rise of AI in Maritime Archaeology. I'm Professor Penny Edmonds, Matthew Flinders Fellow and Dean of Research in the College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences here at Flinders University. And I'm thrilled to welcome you to today's discussion as we explore digital advancements in the world of maritime archaeology. So to begin with, I'd like to acknowledge that we're hosting this discussion on the traditional lands of the Ghana people and that we pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. We also acknowledge and convey our deep appreciation to the elders of all the nations upon which Flinders operates. This event is delivered as part of our Fearless Minds series. Throughout the series, you'll meet some of Flinders University's most engaging early to mid-career researchers as they bring you their latest research from a diverse range of fields. Today, we are fortunate to be hearing from Dr. John McCarthy here at Flinders. John, thanks for joining us today. And can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yes, so uh, I'm a lecturer in maritime archaeology here at Flinders. I've been working here for um, just since the start of this year and previous to that did my PhD at Flinders. Uh, so um, I've been uh, working in archaeology since around about 2005, uh, mostly in field work and in pre-development work uh, industry. Uh, and then uh, more and more over the last decade or so, I've drifted more into research and published uh, some of the work that I've been doing. Uh, and uh, eventually, uh, yeah, that led to a lectureship here at Flinders. And uh, at the moment, I'm working on a, an Australian Research Council uh, DECRA Early Career Researcher Fellowship, uh, which looks at using machine learning to search for uh, ancient submerged landscapes on the seabed. Mm, fantastic. And can you tell us how you first got into marine archaeology? Yeah, so uh, my very uh, first involvement with uh, marine archaeology started with diving. Uh, and uh, when I was backpacking around Thailand, back in my early 20s, I decided to try out diving, really enjoyed it, uh, and ended up um, getting uh, my basic qualifications there. And then years later, after working in terrestrial archaeology for a long time, uh, I was approached uh, by the company I worked for and asked if I wanted to specialize more into maritime archaeology. They supported me to get more dive qualifications and get more training for offshore work. Uh, and that's really led into uh, a research career and the kind of work that I do now, um, because uh, I specialized a lot in um, different survey techniques, particularly and um, that's really um, what underpins my current research fellowship. Mm, fantastic. Mm. So tell us about your first deep water dive. Was it frightening or did the adrenaline, adrenaline rush overtake <laughs> the, you know, the fear? Uh, yeah, well, it was, uh, it was sort of uh, exciting and uh, a little bit scary at first, um, as it is for all trainee divers. But over time with experience, you really lose that fear entirely. You, um, your training makes it much, much safer. And uh, you learn all about the equipment and the physics of diving. Uh, and um, we don't tend to go terribly deep for archaeology. A lot of the archaeology can be accessed in uh, the first 10, 20, 30 mm -hmm. meters uh, of water. So that's where we tend to do most of our work. Uh, especially here in Australia, the water is nice and clear and there's a lot of nice tropical fish and things. Uh, but um, diving, diving has been very uh, useful for my research, but I always say to the students, you don't have to be a diver to be a maritime archaeologist. Okay. There are lots of other paths available. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. And can you tell us your most memorable diving experience? Uh, well, there's been quite a lot over the years. Uh, I think probably one that stands out uh, most in the last, um, certainly in the last few years, is uh, working with the Deep History of Sea Country project in Western Australia. Uh, myself and uh, another uh, diver, both students at the time, were supporting a project uh, run by uh, Dr. Jonathan Benjamin here at Flinders. 
uh, and we were tasked with looking for evidence of submerged landscapes in Australia. So um, we had been searching for years for this kind of archaeology in different parts of the world. Uh, and it's really tough to find, but on this one dive, myself and Chelsea started to find it here. And that's been an incredible um, journey uh, and a lot of research has mm. come out of that. And what did uh, you find? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we, we found um, stone tools that must have been on the seabed there for at least seven, eight thousand years. And um, that shows that, it, you know, all the science that we expected is correct, that uh, at times of lower sea levels, people lived on the continental shelf of Australia down to 130 meters depth and that there should be archaeology all around the coast of Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really just a question of um, trying to find it. And so that task now falls to the current and future generations of maritime archaeology students and researchers to go out and uh, work on that. That's the next major frontier in maritime archaeology. Yes, in collaboration with Indigenous communities. Absolutely, yes. We've been working very closely with uh, the Murrajuga Aboriginal Corporation up there and reaching out to lots of um, traditional owner mm -hmm. groups across Australia. Uh, and also as part of my fellowship, the plan is to uh, open the door uh, and fund training for Indigenous researchers to come in and participate, ultimately lead in this area of research. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your work in the creation of uh, 3D digital um, maritime libraries? Yeah, so um, although I'm an archaeologist and a maritime archaeologist, which is already to some extent especially a specialty, uh, actually my real kind of focus that underpins all of my work is digital archaeology and uh, trying to find ways to leverage emerging technologies to facilitate uh, maritime archaeology work. It's, it's really important for us uh, in the marine environment where it's difficult to access the archaeological resource, uh, difficult to survey it, difficult to analyze and interpret. Uh, and so digital techniques have been an absolute game changer over the last 10 or 15 years. And so um, with techniques like photogrammetry, handling of 3D uh, survey data from the seabed, uh, we're able to make a lot more um, progress in our analysis and save a lot of time uh, and um, see things that you just can't even see as a diver. Mm. So this is, this is a good example of forensic reconstruction of uh, the 17th century Batavia shipwreck on the seabed, bringing together lots of different survey data. Mm. Okay, and um, what can you tell us about the virtual dive experiences you've been working on? And are these for scientific purposes or is it a tourism opportunity? Yeah, it's got lots of different um, use case scenarios. Uh, virtual diving is a natural extension of the digital specialism because we are capturing things in three dimensions in digital formats. And so to bring them into a virtual world is not such a big leap. Uh, and also maritime archaeology is very inaccessible to the public, whether it's because of health or age uh, or cost. It's just too expensive for a lot of people. Uh, sites like the I-124 submarine are legally protected. No one's allowed dive. So by developing virtual experiences, we can bring people to the heritage in a way that you just can't do otherwise, mm -hmm. that uh, terrestrial archaeologists don't have quite the same uh, barrier to access. Mm. Fantastic. And I know that you have a three-year Australian Research Council, DECRA, which you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. and that's to investigate the potential for the use of machine learning when uh, prospecting underwater archaeological sites. So can you tell us about the benefits of AI to the investigation of these archaeological sites? Yes, uh, AI is a really powerful technique for finding patterns. Uh, just like it finds your face on a phone, it recognizes your face, uh, we want to train algorithms to help us find submerged sites on the seabed. Uh, and uh, stone tools like this one, this is a grinding stone, a muller uh, that we found in Murrajuga in 2019. Um, 
Finding sites like this can be very difficult, time-consuming, expensive. We have to uh, really put a lot of background research in. And uh, one of my experiences from working in the field is that the divers were often jumping in the water, but they weren't finding much. And uh, it would really be a waste to dive, and it would, mm -hmm. it would reduce our opportunity to um, find more sites. We'd really like to speed that process up. So uh, the idea with my fellowship is to train an algorithm to help us um, move that on a little bit further before the divers go in. Uh, and uh, we'll do high resolution image based photogrammetric surveys of the seabed uh, and then we'll apply the algorithm to it and uh, then we'll find the, the most, the areas with the most potential, the most perspective and put the divers there and hopefully that will increase our strike rate. Uh, and we have a really big uh, search area, a canvas, all of Australia. <laughs> Uh, and indeed, the, the world's continental shelves. <laughs> you so certainly do. Anything that can speed, speed things up and, and increase our strike rate will make a massive difference mm. to our area of research. Mm. Okay, and this year, 2022, is the 20th anniversary of the Flinders Maritime Archaeological Program, mm. or the MAP program, as we call it. And can you tell us why this is significant and uh, how do you intend to celebrate? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, Flinders, uh, the 20-year the anniversary is quite significant because um, Australia has always been a global leader in maritime archaeology, in the techniques and the research. Flinders University, from, from uh, its foundation of the maritime archaeology program 20 years ago, has been at the heart of that. Uh, and one of the main institutions that drives that expertise and that excellence here. Um, and that, that reputation is international. We get students coming from all over the world to mm -hmm. tap into that. Um, and so we wanted to mark the 20 year anniversary. What we're doing this year is um, we're uh, hosting a um, AMA, which is the Australasian Institute of Maritime Archaeology conference as a celebration of the 20 years of FUMA. Uh, so we will um, have alumni from all over um, the world coming back to give speeches and presentations and we're going to have photo competitions. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a website and we have uh, all sorts of things to celebrate the incredible achievements of the last 20 years and also to take stock of where we are now as a program. We have uh, the highest staff capacity that we've ever had with the current um, cohort of um, uh, academics and professional staff. We have uh, a research vessel which we uh, just got uh, and lots of um, hardware and interesting new technologies that we're applying. So we've got this incredible um, legacy of people working all over the world from the program of research the program has completed but it's really looking to ramp up in the next few years uh, and build on that progress. So mm -hmm. it's a really good time to take stock mm -hmm. and also to honor our founder, Mark Staniforth, who began the program all those years ago. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And um, just say that students and others want to get in touch and they're interested in pursuing a career in archaeology, marine archaeology, what would you say to them? Uh, well, uh, get in touch with us. Um, whether your interest is in shipwrecks, in conservation, submerged landscapes, um, any, any aspect of maritime archaeology, we have a really broad scope of um, experts and equipment and specialisms here at Flinders. Uh, and we're always interested to hear from people. Uh, reach out to us by email or LinkedIn or any other method. And we're a very easygoing, friendly group of people. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and bring your own ideas to us. And um, we're happy to have that discussion. But our students have had some really um, good outcomes for their career. We've just done a survey of our alum for the um, anniversary events. And there's a very high proportion of the graduates of the program at all levels who are now working in incredibly interesting jobs all over the world. Mm. So, yeah. 
get okay. in touch. <laughs> Well, what a fantastic discussion. I secretly want to be a marine archaeologist now. Uh, so thank you so much, Dr. John McCarthy, for sharing your time and knowledge with us. And remember, you can watch any of our Fearless Minds uh, episodes on the Flinders YouTube channel, and we hope you will join us for the next one. Thanks so much, and goodbye. Thanks.